Hey guys, Elementrix here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel and to a brand new video series called Valorant Basics, a series where we go over everything you need to know in order to elevate your game to the next level. And starting off with episode one with the first thing you probably look at when starting up a new game and that is your setup and settings. To give you guys a better overview, here's the breakdown of this video and you can find all the timestamps in the description down below. So we'll be starting off with external setup, then in-game settings, and lastly, your crosshair style. So let's go over to the desktop where we'll be starting off with the external setup. Just a quick note before we get started, this part of the video is only for NVIDIA users. Sorry Team Red, but this step does not apply to you. Firstly, we need to get to the NVIDIA control panel and here we'll be taking a look at your settings on a driver level. And whilst you can change some of these settings in game, this option is more effective. You will then need to jump into your 3D settings and whilst you can do this for all applications, I prefer to select program settings and specifically select Valorant. Starting off with your refresh rate, you will want to cap this to the highest possible frames that your monitor can display. In my case, I'm running a 240Hz monitor, hence the 240fps. And this is mainly for consistency, as I want my frame rate to be as stable as possible to avoid frame drops messing with my aim. The next setting is monitor technology, and if your GPU is able to put out equal to or more frames than the refresh rate of your monitor, then you will want to set this to fixed refresh, as G-Sync can be responsible for input lag and you definitely do not want this. Moving on to power management mode, and you will want to set this to prefer maximum performance, as it will ensure that your GPU is getting all the power it needs to give you the most amount of frames at all times. And lastly, make sure to switch texture filtering quality to high performance, as it will prioritize more frames over the game looking slightly better. The final external setting we'll be taking a look at is that of your mouse in the window settings. Simply search for mouse settings, and on the right hand side, click additional mouse options. Then click on pointer options and make sure to untick enhance pointer precision. This guy can be responsible for you not consistently hitting your flick shots. As enhanced pointer precision in layman's terms means mouse acceleration. When it's enabled, the faster you move your physical mouse, the faster the cursor or in-game crosshair speeds up to get to its location. When it's disabled, there's always a one-to-one -one ratio of distance your mouse travels to distance your cursor moves on the screen, regardless of how fast you move your mouse, and this is exactly what you want. Let's jump in game and I'll be showing you my settings as it makes it easier for me to navigate through the settings menu. Keep in mind that most pro players use similar settings and that is the reference point that I used when setting up my game. Starting off with general settings, I set the enemy highlight color to purple as they say your headshot percentage rate will increase by exactly 0.004%. This is purely due to personal preference, so set this to whatever you like. We won't be taking a look at in-game sensitivity and DPI just yet, as that deserves its own video. So if you're watching this video in 3 days after I made it, then make sure to check out episode 2 of Valorant Basics. Moving on to the minimap, and I recommend that you play with these settings until you can, in most cases, see the entire map, as this will give you a better overview on what is going on. Remember, information is key in a game like Valorant. This is my minimap setup, and I find it works great for me. For these next settings, it is pretty much all personal preference. However, I would suggest that you always leave the map regions on so you can learn the callout spots, show blood as it makes it easier for you to see if you're hitting your shots, and set show bullet tracers as on so you can see where the bullets are coming from, allowing you to react faster. If you're wondering how to get these red or blue icons instead of corpses, then change show corpses to off. Keep in mind that in some cases, the holographic icon can block lines of sight and it may work against you. So give it a try and see what you prefer. If your internet isn't that stable and you're playing at a ping of higher than 100, then try setting the network buffering to moderate as it will lower your ping. But do keep in mind that it will introduce some input lag. For the graphics quality in the video settings, I have everything on low or off, except for anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, and first person shadows. Anti-aliasing should be set to none if your GPU struggles to give you a stable frame rate. It essentially removes jagged edges, which for me is important, and as I am running a 2070, setting it to four times is not a problem. Anisotropic filtering makes everything in the distance look sharper. Whilst turning it up to 16 times is not necessary, I have found that anywhere around four to eight times is perfect for me. Now moving on to the final and most requested part of this video, and that is the crosshair settings. This is again personal preference, and the tip I can give here is, if you are new to competitive shooters, set your movement error to on, as it will give you an indication on when you're completely standing still, meaning you are accurate. Once you start to improve and you start to get a feeling of when you are completely standing still, 
then you can turn this off. I prefer to play with a fairly small crosshair and with no dot. It took me 3 to 4 changes until I found the crosshair that works best for me. So I suggest that you play around with these settings until you find a crosshair that works for you. It is important that you find the crosshair that works best for you. Keep in mind that copying someone else's crosshair isn't going to make you play better. Otherwise, we would all be playing like Shroud. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. And if you did, you already know what to do. And if you're new to the channel and you really enjoy this kind of content, then why not consider subscribing? So take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you guys later.